Hi and welcome, it's Milan here with another Tuning Into The One video and uh, today as we're winding down one year and looking forward to another uh, between uh, the holiday season and the new year, what we want to focus in on today in this video is how to handle difficult and challenging situations when they come up and how you can build that into a way of looking for a new point of contact, a new point of attraction, a new way and a new moment where you can say to yourself, okay, I'm not going to do things the way I used to do them. And particularly if, if you've had difficult situations or difficult challenges, had a really tough year or really tough moments, if there's something that's unraveling in your life or you're just plain tired of the same old thing the same old way. So for me personally, um, 1994 and 2005 were really amazingly uh, hinge point years. Why? Because in 1994 there was the Northridge earthquake in Southern California in January and it shook literally and just, you know, it was one of those dramatic moments in life. If you know earthquakes, this one was quite big and it was an amazing, uh, amazing challenge because all of a sudden you're waking up and you're realizing, wow, that, that was like, you know, a 6.8 or something. and what do I do? But 94 was one of the most challenging years of my life. Why? Because in January there was the earthquake. In February I almost died in a car accident on the 134 freeway where somebody came perpendicular to the flow of traffic on a motorway, on a, on a freeway traveling at 65 miles per hour um, perpendicular. That's about 120, 130 uh, kilometers per hour for those of you that are on the metric system. And I almost died in that car accident. Then in March, uh, wife number one, soulmate number one, decided she was leaving on her birthday. So definitely suffice it to say that that's one day I won't forget. And in a different kind of context, looking at it from the other side, maybe it was a uh, a stroke of luck because it really helped me to look at things at a deeper what level. Oftentimes challenging and difficult moments can either be those things that bury us, define us, or help us to find an opportunity to grow. And so that's what this video is really all about. How do you transform something that happens to you and really change it? Now for me 94 kept getting worse. So not only was I starting the process of getting divorced from my soulmate, the woman I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with, but we also had a business together, an import-export business. My wife, myself, and my best friend from high school were partners in this business. So not only was I getting a divorce from my wife, but I was getting divorced from the business and I ended up getting divorced from my best friend from high school and that was just January, February, and March. Then in June, my father died suddenly of a heart attack, a massive heart attack at a church wedding reception, and that was the day before Father's Day. And then in August, my mother lost her job. So 1994 was an incredibly challenging and an incredibly difficult year. However, I also happened to meet wife number two and soulmate number two the same year. So it was definitely the best of times in terms of new beginnings and it was also incredibly challenging because my life was unraveling and falling apart all around me for the first six to seven months of the year and then after that it was just like how to survive, how to go into survival mode to make it through the rest of the year. Then again, fast forward 11 years down the road, and here I am again with wife number two, soulmate number two, and we're on the cusp of ending our relationship. But I, along the way in that decade, I did a lot of work. I did a lot of personal work, a lot of personal growth, a lot of personal development, and that allowed me to have some tools and some skills and some, some abilities to be able to manage what was going on around me very differently than the previous decade. And today we're talking about how to be able to transition from those amazingly difficult moments and those challenging emotions and absolutely heart-aching or heartbreaking experiences and be able to bounce back. So. If you look below this video, you'll be able to download a form which I came up with at the end of 2004 to help me move forward powerfully and with a lot of the things that I wanted and be able to leave what I didn't want behind, knowing that now with these tools, I could make a bigger difference in my life in a quicker, faster, better, and easier way. So I came up with Milan's new core values and beliefs resolutions for 2005. And what I did and what I've been doing ever since with my one-on-one -on -one clients coaching one-on-one -on -one with them to use this exact same tool 
is to come up with the two or three most devastating or damaging negative emotions that were plaguing me during this time and this period and then come up with some rules for how to deal with them. So for 1994, I really didn't have that tool. For 2004, I came up with frustration and anger and I said to myself, you know what? I've been so frustrated and so angry this whole year, that's not the way I want to live my life. I want to find the beauty. I want to find my passion and rediscover a different way of being as I move forward into 2005 and redefine my life now that divorce number two is on the horizon. And for rules of frustration, I came up with the only time I allow myself to indulge and feel frustration is if I consistently fail to heed my playful nature and my self-knowledge of that beauty and freedom are mine to be had. And then, like any tool that you want to use for changing one thing in a habit or an emotional state, you have to have something to replace it with. And what I ended up picking was practical, unconditional acceptance. Practical, unconditional acceptance. So to practice unconditional acceptance in a practical way. And then I came up with a rule for anger. And my rule was the only time I will indulge in anger is when I forget that I am a free and powerful being that gets to choose. And when I forget that, that the feeling of forgiveness helps to forgive, then I will get into anger. So I need to practice unconditional forgiveness as a replacement for anger. And the additional thing that I did was I also came up with affirmations. I came up with two negative emotional states that were devastating and destructive, came up with rules for them, and then came up with the alternative that I wanted to use instead of that negative emotion or state. I also came up with affirmations. And the two affirmations I wanted coming out of 2004 and into 2005 happened to be that I have all the money and resources I need to succeed. And the other one was I have a millionaire mindset. I have a millionaire mindset. We were already millionaires on paper, but now I knew that was going to go south as a result of the divorce. We were going to be splitting our assets. So I needed to focus in on those two things to keep my mind solid on the fact that I can rebuild, I can start all over, and life is going to be wonderful again. And then I came up with steps to make effective change. And I wrote all this down on a form, and at the bottom of it I came up with the three things that I most wanted to practice in the new year. Unconditional love, unconditional acceptance, and unconditional forgiveness. I came up with this form, I used colors, I went ahead and made this into a Word document, and I printed it out. I printed out several copies. I put one on the vanity mirror so that every morning when I got up and I brushed my teeth, it was right there looking at me. And I put one next to my nightstand and I also put one in my car. So whenever I was going somewhere or I was getting ready to wind down the day and go to sleep or I was ready to wake up and start the day, I had this resolutions for 2005 right there handy, ready for me to use. And this is a great tool and a great way for you to model the same exact thing. Pick the negative emotions that you least want to be in in the new year and then come up with a rule for how you're going to remind yourself to get out of it if you find yourself there. Then make sure you come up with the alternative positive or complement positive emotion or state that you'd rather be in. So for me, anger required me to practice forgiveness. Frustration required me to practice acceptance. That was me. Then I came up with two affirmations that were going to help me get resourceful and be even more of a force for my own good in 2005. And then I came up with six steps for how to make change effective. Six steps for how to make change effective and then three of those amazing qualities that I wanted, which were unconditional love, unconditional acceptance, and unconditional forgiveness. That really helped to set the tone for 2005 in a way that I didn't know how to do way back when for 1995. So in 10 years or 11 years, the difference was I now had tools, I now had skill sets, and I was going to put them into action. And I did. And when I started doing that, amazing things happened quicker, better, and easier than I ever thought possible before. So it's possible for you, too, to take challenging and amazingly difficult or devastating situations and turn them around. So please remember, if you like us or if you want to comment about this video or subscribe to this series, do it right below this video. And as always, I want to remind you that 
you can go ahead and sign up for a free 45-minute one-on-one soulmate attraction blueprint introductory session with me. If you look right below this link, you'll be able to read more and find out more on how to do that. And remember, I only do three of these a week. And especially now that it's a key time and a pivot time to start a new year, you might think about it. So if wanting to find Mr. Right right now is for you, then click the link below and you'll be able to find out more information about getting your free 45-minute Soulmate Attraction Blueprint session with me booked. In the meantime, this is Milan wishing you the best success in dating and relationship mastery. And until the next time, bye for now.